of 18 than the beginning thereof. I bet you something will touch you today. Wherever you have been forgotten, <laughs> today is your set time to be remembered. Anywhere you have been forgotten for good, the veil will be swallowed up today. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. We had an unusual service of this kind some years back. A sister who was practicing as a vet doctor, she was just managing in one school like that. And she was just remembered. And that remembrance, the, it was on the spot action. Send your passport now. From sending your passport now, they gave her visa to China package some amount of dollars for her and she traveled and spent two weeks free training came back levels change I bet you the anointing of today will provoke divine remembrance for you if you are saying amen say a better amen whoever vowed that it shall be impossible for you to get a blessing as long as they live Mark my word. Whatever embargo they place over you will be crushed today. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. I don't know what you desire, but God is a good rewarder. I want you to place a demand on God right now. Lord, in serving I have served. And today, give me laughter. I have cried enough. I have sorrowed enough. I have wept enough. Today is my set time for laughter. Let my own portion of laughter answer in my life. Lift up your voice and talk to God. In this covenant day of laughter, give me my own laughter. Give me my own laughter. Give me my own laughter. Just like you made Sarah to laugh. Give me my own laughter. What I cannot give to myself. Give me my own laughter. Give me my own laughter. Give me my own laughter. You have not said to the seed of Jacob to seek you in vain. Give me my own laughter. Give me my own laughter. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. Today, the book of remembrance will be open for you. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. Someone that should have appeared in your life long time ago will appear today. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. That appearance will announce good news for someone. Amen. I'm talking to somebody. That appearance will announce good news for you. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord and please take your seat. We are going to take it in three series. My set time has come. This first service is remembrance. Second service, announcement. Third service, reward. You will not miss it. And in case you forgot your checkbook, those of you that don't like coming for Saturday prayer, 
you will not be hearing some announcement because they will only be announced as the spirit leads. Are you hearing me now? In case you didn't come with your checkbook, just write your name and your account number in a piece of paper so that the Holy Ghost can touch it. <laughs> then in second service, whatever represents your handwork, we'll be focusing on that one. Hallelujah. For every one of you that have labored tirelessly for operation, taking territory by all means, which is ending today, I want to let you know you will not escape this reward. Amen. Please say a good amen. amen. And for those that have been watching and observing, keep observing. <laughs> Praise God. In our series of teaching for this month's Seasons of Glory, we're focusing on riding riding the waves of glory. Every season announces the end of a season and the beginning of a new season. For someone here, your season of dryness is coming to an end. Your season of disappointment is coming to an end. Your season of failure is coming to an end. To another, you are transcending from one level of glory to another level of glory. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. Chapter 3 and verse 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. This is your time. I said this is your set time. In John chapter 5 scripture says at a certain season an angel comes to steer the water and everyone that jumped into it is made whole. I want to let you know when glory comes blessings show something new will show in your life it is impossible to experience glory without the manifestation of the Holy Spirit and that is why we are going to be focusing on this service the anointing of the Holy Spirit Everybody desires glory. Everybody wants to experience glory. But you can't assess glory without the Holy Spirit. Is the principal custodian is in charge. He is holding the key of glory. That's why he is called the spirit of glory. You can't assess glory without the Holy Spirit. A profitable life is by his manifestation. Now assess your life. Look at yourself. Don't look at anybody now. Is your life profitable? Are you enjoying profit? Are you experiencing profit the way you should experience it? Are you experiencing profit the way you should experience it? If you are not experiencing it the way you should experience it, man, there is something that is needed to be done. That is needed to be done. It's, it's impossible for anyone to profit in life and in destiny without the help of the Holy Spirit. You can't live supernaturally, live differently, Without the help of the Holy Spirit. I'm using the word help. Why? Because he's our enabler. He's the one that enables you to live like a child of God. Experience what a child of God should experience. If your, if your experience in life is not different from an unbeliever, they will make a mockery of you. 
I remember I went for evangelism one time. <laughs> they, told, they told one brother that uh, if born again is your type, I don't want. Do you know the meaning? He was living a life of mockery. There was no evidence to show. But there are others. When you look at them, you desire to be born again. You desire to be born again. I won't forget one young man that was um, in our hostel, in our room, in my final year in university. I never, we never preached to him one day. Because he was making a mockery of believers. And funny enough, they now brought him I mean, to stay in the same room. So he was inside. I was this side. When we are going for fellowship, we don't call him. But anytime we are praying, he will be praying. Anytime we are praying in the room, he will be praying. Funny enough, my cubicle happened to be where some of my departments, my classmates, at least four of them, they come to eat from my, from my bunk. And I had one of them, Douglas. Douglas was in year two, we were in final year. So Douglas was the chef. He was the chief cook. His job is to cook the food. That's his own assignment. He doesn't contribute to the food. His own is just to cook the food. So every time, this young man will observe that these people, they are eating. Morning, they are eating. Afternoon, they are eating. Night, they are eating. So one day, we had to go for evening fellowship. He said, tea. Bro, tea. I said, I hope there's no problem. He said, when is the time for that fellowship? I want to follow you today. I said, Why? He said, um, the way you people are living is a sign that um, uh, your life is better than my own. He said it with his mouth. Hear me, it's the Holy Ghost. I say it's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. There are many ways to witness. Witnessing is not only telling someone that... Uh, you need to repent and give your life to Christ. No. When they see what is happening around you, they will desire to be like you. And that day he followed us, he gave his life to Christ. But he has been praying. You know, anytime we are praying in the room, he's also praying. I don't know what he was praying. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Today, God will change your color. If you are saying amen, say a better amen. amen. If you are saying amen, say a better amen. amen. Redemption does not speak without the Holy Ghost announcing glory over you. He's the announcer. To them that he did predestine, he called. To them he called, he justify. And to them he justify, he also glorify. So your journey of glory begins with you walking with the Holy Spirit. So it is impossible to test glory without the Holy Ghost having its full work, its full effect in your life and one way the holy ghost enable us to experience glory is the manifestation of power say with me power, power. <laughs> no wonder the psalmist said to see thy power and thy glory no power no glory oh lord thou art my god early will i seek thee my soul longed for thee my flesh tested after thee to see thy power and thy glory. No power, no glory. That is why wherever power is absent, shame will be present. And if there is any drive that the enemy is driving in your life, is to make sure you are perpetually powerless by rendering you constantly prayerless.
Your annoyance against prayer is not ordinary. There is a force that wants to keep you in shame. So you will buy it. This prayer thing is getting too much. But I've never seen anyone that tested power that did not go through the channel of prayer. It's not the Holy Ghost. It's a product that the Holy Ghost gives. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon thee. So for glory to manifest in your life, the Holy Spirit must announce the anointing. The anointing. My life will remain the same. No improvement. No change. No progress without power. That is why lack of power is the breeding ground of frustration. Lack of power is the breeding ground of poverty. Lack of power is the breeding ground of disappointment. Now, even naturally, there are people you meet. There are people you meet just like a switch. Things begin to change. Am I correct? That is why the anointing can be likened to spiritual electricity. The same way we have physical electricity. If you touch physical electricity, it will shock you. The anointing has what we call tangible effect. It has tangible effect. It is feelable. It is touchable. It is handleable. That's why playing with the anointing, maybe you are looking for electrocution. Am I saying the truth? Playing with the anointing, you are asking for electrocution. Just like you see naked wire, you just go and put your hand. You never do me anything. <laughs> Three of us. <laughs> Am I correct? There was a young man that wanted to go and steal a transformer in Benin two months ago. The team fry him. He roasted him like stockfish. Maybe he felt he was an electrician. I can disconnect very fast. The thing disconnected him. The anointing can preserve, it can also electrocute. It facilitates destruction in case you want to die. So in case someone wants to die, you should look for an anointing or an anointed to play with. That's why scripture says, touch not my anointed. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It, it, they can facilitate your destruction. They can help you to be destroyed very quick since that's what you are looking for. I'm making this reference now because whatever is behind struggle in your life, the anointing will dry it. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Whatever is behind hardship in your life, the anointing will dry it up. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. So the unction of the Holy Ghost or the anointing of the Holy Spirit is the answer to shame, is the answer to oppression, is the answer to reproach. It takes power to force the enemy to bow. And that power is channeled into our life through the Holy Spirit. I tell you the truth, the anointing cannot be frustrated. The anointing and the anointed cannot be frustrated. Organize it. Arrange it. 
the anointing and the anointed cannot be frustrated. Likewise, without the anointing, the word cannot be turned into reality. Every time power is released, reality is manifest. I want to assure someone in this service, the reality of the anointing will answer over your issue. Amen. If you are saying amen, say a better amen. amen. I say it will answer over your issue. Amen. Yes, I agree with you. They have told you it is impossible. But not when the anointing shows up. And I know the anointing is going to show up concerning you today. Amen. Scripture says it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken away from thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And because of the anointing, every yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. That yoke will leave you today. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better. Amen. amen. Supernatural living is impossible without the anointing of the Holy Spirit. When we talk about supernatural living, we talk about the life added to glory by the Holy Spirit. He is called the Spirit of glory. So he makes life glorious. What does it mean to live a life full of glory? A life full of glory is a life full of the goodness of God. Full of the blessings of God. Full of the favor of God. There are people that are merely existing. Others are living. How are things now? Man, we are patching it. Hear me? You are not here to patch life. You are here to live life in full color. And whatever makes for a colorful life, by the anointing this morning, a change will take place for you. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. I want to assure someone, this change is instant. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, who we were like them that dream, then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. This change is instant. Between now and tomorrow, a notable change will take place. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. I'm not talking of a change that will take place in December. I'm talking of a change that will start taking place beginning from today. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. The anointing of the Holy Spirit enables us to live supernaturally. It makes supernatural living possible. What does it mean to live supernaturally? Where you are not affected by the things that affect others. When men are saying there is a casting down, thou shalt say there is a lifting up. There was scarcity in Egypt, but in Goshen there was abundance for Joseph and the brothers. So when the anointing comes upon you, he enables you to live above the natural. Where you are not delayed by natural laws. Hindered by natural laws. Affected by natural laws. There are laws that keep people bound. There are laws that keep people on the same spot. There are laws that forbid people from going forward. But not when the anointing is at work in your life. When the anointing is at work in your life, if it can keep others down, it will allow you to go. I say it will allow you to go. Yeah. So it is impossible for you to be anointed and be stranded. The anointed cannot be stranded. I said the anointed cannot be stranded. Amen. Wherever you are stranded today, God is making a way for you. Amen. Why? I will make a way where there seems to be no way. God is a way maker. 
I say God is a way maker. I say God is a way maker. Someone has given up. He's just saying, let me just come to this service. If nothing happens, I'm here to tell you something will happen. I'm telling you now, something will happen for you. I say something will happen for you. You might have given up, but God is taking up your matter. Say amen like a believer. Every time the anointing shows up, something must happen. The journey of supernatural living by the anointing begins with vision. Say with me, vision. Proverbs 29 and verse 18 Where there is no vision that people perish Where there is no vision that people perish The moment God begins to open your eyes to vision Your days of struggle, they are over. Abraham lived 75 years, but not a worthwhile life. Not a colorful life. Not a glorious life. But the moment he was called, the next thing that followed, look up to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west, as far as as your eyes can see. So the beginning of Abraham's change was rooted in what? Vision. So every time the spirit moves, he releases vision upon the people. And when vision comes, you are fooled with strength. You become tireless. Jeremiah was here as thou. He said, I see the rod of an almond tree. He said, thou has well seen. He said, I will hasten my word to perform it. No wonder people that lack vision, they continue to suffer frustration. They continue to suffer depression. They continue to suffer oppression. Why? They cannot see better. If you can see better, the challenges around you now, they are not strong enough to stop you. I say they are not strong enough to stop you. We are you are seeing is better than what is happening. Scripture says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured. If you lack vision, you will be a complainer. Pastor, I don't seem to understand what is happening. Nothing is working. Nothing seems to be happening around me. Who told you? I remember one young man went to meet uh, Bishop Abiyo sometime. He said, sir, I, I just feel like giving up. Nothing is working. <laughs> Bishop just like, he said, nothing is working. He said, put your hand like this. Do your hand like this. Is your heart beating? He says, it's It's meaning something is working. I say, something is working. Is something working? When there is life, there is hope. (laughs) Him that is joined to the God of the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Tell your neighbor, there is hope for you. If you don't have life, you can't think of car. You can't think of house. You can't think of marriage. Am I saying the truth? (laughs) If you have life, there is hope for you. I said there is hope for you. There is hope for you. I said there is hope for you. Joel chapter 2 and verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. 
and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall do what? Shall see what? Shall see what? Please, repeat what you said. Visions means what? Means what? Plenty. Meaning after seeing one now, you can see another one. Vision for life is progressive. Because God keeps showing you as you keep going forward. If what you saw five years ago is still what you are seeing, you are a failure. It means that you are not seeing well. Life gets better as you see brighter. And one thing the Holy Ghost will do, he will keep showing you that part of the joss is like a shiny light that shine brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. If he showed you something last year, he will show you something this year. If he showed you something in June, he will show you another thing again. The more he shows, now hear me, it is the vision you see that guarantee the provision you receive. So every vision there is a divine provision. God never shows you what he cannot give you. God never shows you what he cannot give you. And if there is anyone responsible for the showing, it is the ministry of the Holy Ghost to show you. I will pour out my spirit. Every time there is an outpouring of the spirit, visions and revelations visions and revel it begins to show you the reason for the frustration is because you are disconnected you hear me people you work with they matter they matter the reason why they matter is because if they are not showing you anything good they will show you something bad if they are not showing you anything good they will fuel you with bad things no man leaves you on the same spot. How much more working with the Holy Spirit. Allowing the Holy Ghost to have a full effect and cause in your life. It will begin to unfold to you the plans of God. His assignment is to reveal the deep things. Scripture says, eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Now as he entered into the heart of man, what God has prepared for them that love him. But he has revealed them unto us by his spirit. So every time we are walking with God, the Holy Spirit begins to reveal to us. I want to let you know your life is better than what you are seeing now. I say your life is better than what you are seeing now. What you are seeing now does not have the capacity to stop you from reaching where God is taking you to. Psalm 87 and verse 3. Psalm 87 and verse 3. Lazy computer. When Papa, as Papa is mentioning it, boah, I don't know where you are. You will need my touch oh, after service. Come and see me. I need to lay hands on you. Glorious things are spoken of thee, not shameful things. What is what the scripture say? Your life is too glorious. Any person that is talking rubbish now is not seeing well. Quote me. Any person talking rubbish now is not seeing well. You know the funniest thing? They were not there when God crafted the plan. So they are, they are permitted to talk jargon. They are permitted to talk rubbish. But concerning you, he said glorious things are spoken concerning thee. That is why your enemies, they will always be disappointed anytime a new door is open for you. Anytime breakthrough is open for you. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we will let them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said the hidden. The hidden there refers to people that didn't <laughs> that, that didn't like your face. People that are angry with you. People that are not expecting anything good to take place in you. But hear me, the Holy Ghost is a specialist. 
he picks a non-entity and makes him a celebrity he picks a nobody and make him a somebody if you are saying amen say better amen that's why he can pick you from the gutter <laughs> david said he had picked me up from the married clay and set my feet on the rock to stay and he has established my going i want to let you know anyone making a mockery of you because of the challenges you are going through now they will be disappointed i said they will be disappointed when the holy ghost picks you he can pick you as a non-entity but you can't end up as a non-entity he must decorate you with glory to them he predestined he called to them he called he justified to them he justified he also glorified see the proof he picked peter as a fisherman oh my god but when he got to us is it up chapter 9 or chapter 11 the gods a fisherman has turned to a god the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. The gods. When he picked by Enoch Adeboye, he said, we, we are very poor to the point that even the poor, we are calling us poor. He wore his first bedroom slippers at the age of 13. But today, he can buy the whole of Lafia. You agree with me? Yeah. When the Holy Ghost speaks you, it decorates you. I want to let you know, glorious things are waiting for you. Yeah. Glorious things are waiting for your family. Yeah. Glorious things are waiting for you in destiny. Yeah. That's why you need to know who you need and you need to know who to miss. You need to know who you need and who you need to miss. So refuse to be down. There is a glory ahead of you. And that's why you are going to place a demand on him. When you get back home, show me. You are the revealer. Open me up to dreams and visions. Cause me to see what I have never seen before. That will announce my life. That will announce my destiny. Do you know what? Visionless people are commentators. They are special analysts of other people's life. There are some people whose job is to analyze other people. When they extray you here, it will look as if they were there and when God was forming you. They can define your life to your village. As if the key and the padlock of your life is in their hand. Visionless people are commentators and analysts. But go and check it. Anyone that has vision, something is consuming him. Their drive is the vision. Their pursuit is the vision. They wake up every morning. The vision is ringing in their heart. Why? I must walk the walks of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can walk. May you not end up visionless. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better. Amen. amen. You can't carry vision and suffer discouragement. So every time the Holy Ghost appears, it shows you things that will keep you excited. Why? 
something is about to come to pass. When the Holy Ghost shows up, it shows you things that will keep you excited. The next thing the Holy Ghost will do to you is to reveal to you the contents of your glory. Every container has content. And every content is designed for a continent. Every container has what? The content inside Coke is different from the content inside Sprite. Am I correct? The content inside Sprite is different from the content inside Chivita. Am I correct? Every container has what? Content. You are not empty. I say you are not empty. I say you are not empty. Every container has what? Content. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3, you shall call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. So it is the ministry of the Holy Spirit to show you. To show you. And everything God shows you is particular to you and to your destiny. To show you. is a shower. Jesus even said in John chapter 16 and verse 13, John 16 and verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Something is coming for you. Something good is coming for you. If you are saying amen, say better amen. He keeps showing. He keeps showing. He keeps revealing. The more he reveals, just like Apostle Paul said, and I went up by revelation. Every time God is showing you something, is to take you to a better place. It's to take you higher. It's to take you to a more glorious place. Now hear me. This life has been designed to be glorious. Your own too must be glorious. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Whatever power is behind your suffering, the anointing will terminate it from the root today. Amen. Say amen like a believer. Amen. Another thing the Holy Ghost will do, he leads us to profit. The anointing makes for profitable living. Papa said, you are not born again to suffer again. T.D. Jack said, God has no business taking you out of where you are if he does not have a better place prepared for you. So calling you out will be useless if there is nothing glorious in the place that he's taking you to. Even when God called Abraham, he said, get thee out of thy father's house. Unto a place that I will show thee. Is it not foolishness? At 75. Is your head not correct? 75. Can you be dribbled by marine spirit? Or occultic fathers? Occultic powers? I hope you know that Abraham's father was an occultist. They had a shrine. But he had the voice clear. Get thee out of thy father's house. And out of thy country. To the place that I will show thee. At 75. What did they look for? He has even passed retirement. But that was the beginning of his glory. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That was the beginning of his glory. And he followed. Chapter 13. <laughs> and God has blessed him in all things. Abraham was rich in silver, in gold, in cattle. And God has blessed him in all things. That will be your testimony. So he leads us into profiting. Isaiah 48, let's read it from verse 17. Isaiah 48 from verse 17. Thou sayest the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit. 
which leadeth thee in the way that thou shouldest go. The Holy Ghost does not only teach me how to prophesy. He teach me to profit. How does he teach me to profit? By giving me creative ideas. By giving me inspiration. By raising my mind to the level of creative thinking. Fashioning out things that can be done and things will be working well. A life that is void of creativity will be void of profit. So it's the ministry of the Holy Ghost to teach you how to profit. He don't only teach you how to prophesy. He also teach you how to profit. So if you are not profiting now, you are missing something. The Holy Ghost is a teacher. He teach me how to profit. He teach me how to profit. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leaded me beside the still waters. Go to verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He leaded me beside the still waters. Green pasture. He restored my soul. He leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. For his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Verse 5 now. Thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil and my cup. Did he say your cup will be empty? So the anointing guarantees overflowing blessing. You can't be anointed and have a dry pocket. That's why I ask you to bring your checkbook or your ATM card. You have, you have your ATM card? After you are anointed this day, you shall meet two men on the way and they shall salute thee. They will be carrying three loaves and they will give you two. Amen. Is it normal? Love your neighbor as yourself, not more than yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Something must happen today. I tell you something must happen today. He leads you to profiting. A life of profit is triggered by the anointing. From today, you begin to see profits. Amen. But hear this, what you don't expect, you don't experience. You know, we are used to struggling and suffer ahead. If everything that must come to you, you worked it out, then you are lacking something that they call favor. You are lacking favor. You can't enjoy favor without the Holy Spirit. He's the one that gives you favor. But when the anointing comes, favor follows. You will see laughter today. Yeah. I say you will see financial laughter today. Yeah. And number three, every time the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes, it makes the impossible to be crushed. Zechariah chapter 4, let's read it from verse 6. Are looking for Zachariah. <laughs> These people. <laughs> oh my God. The Lord will help me. It's okay. The six. Then he answered me. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. What thou, O great mountain, 
before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain, and it shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouting, crying, grace, grace unto it. Every time the anointing comes, whatever look like a blockade is crushed. The anointing is a crusher. So whatever men have told you is impossible, God will crush it today. Yeah. Even if someone is standing uh, as an obstacle, record this, write it down. You will hear the testimony by next Sunday. Yeah. Whoever is standing as an obstacle to your testimony, as you are anointed today, the God of Oreco crush the person. The God of Oreco crush the person. The God of Oreco crush the person. He that falleth upon the stone shall be broken in pieces. And whosoever this stone shall fall upon shall be grinded to powder. Anyone that has vowed a vow that over their dead body will they see you laugh. I decree by the anointing, let them enter their dead body. I decree by the anointing, let them enter their dead body. Let their dead body be announced. Say amen like a believer. I said, whoever, whoever, whoever have vowed a vow that over their dead body will they see you laugh. They have had their way all these days, but today is your day. The weeping they gave to you, it is time for their own family to cry. The sorrow they brought for you, it is time for their family to have their own portion. Say amen like a believer. Amen. Isaiah 45, read from verse 1. Thou said the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, to his anointed pastor Tony and Mephili, whose right hand have I holding? To subdue nations before him. I will lose the loins of kings. I will open before him the two leaf gates. And the gates shall not be shut. Verse 2. I will go before thee. And make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass. I will cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places that thou mightest know that I, the Lord, which called thee by thy name, I am the God of Israel. I want to say to you, today you will go with your desire laughter. When I say it is your set time, Hear me? God does not dwell in time. He dwells in eternity. But anytime God shows up, it is your time. I say it's your time. Yeah. And God is showing up for you today. Yeah. That amen is too weak. Yeah. Has God done it before? Yes. He said, according to the time of life, I will return. And Sarah shall bring forth. Scripture says Sarah laughed. But according to the time of life, God appeared. Now hear me. Was not God aware that she was 90? Was he not aware that she has crossed monopause? But scripture said, and the Lord visited Sarah as he has said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. 
as he has spoken. And Sarah went on to say, God has made me to laugh. And all that here will laugh with me. I want to say to you, God will make you to laugh today. Yeah. Your family pain is coming to an end today. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Amen. Yeah. I say your family pain is coming to an end today. Anytime the anointing shows up, he subdues, he overpowers enemies of glory. He rendered them useless. He incapacitates them. Apostle Paul saw for a great door and effectual is open unto us, but there are many adversaries. The anointing is a silencer of adversaries. Every time the anointing shows up, it cuts down the adversaries. I don't know who is fighting your glory from manifesting. I have one divine assurance for you. The anointing will cut them down. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better amen. amen. Make that amen louder. Amen. When the enemy shall come, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord we lift up a standard. Isaiah 59 and verse 19. When the enemy shall come. I don't know who have come against you. But hear me. Jesus gave them in Mark chapter 6. Power against. Ah, He gave them power against. So the anointing is against. It's against something. And it's against somebody. Whoever is against you. The anointing will be against them. You better say a good amen. amen. Whoever is against you, the anointing will work against them. Amen. He gave them power against. It's not me that said it to. He gave them power against. Whatever is against the plan and purpose of God for your life, that does not want you to reach where God has ordained you to reach, the anointing is against them. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. Whoever is looking for what to do again so that you will not marry, hear me? The anointing will strike them. Amen. Say amen like a believer. Amen. So the anointing handles manipulation, swallows enchantment. And disgrace sorceries. So whatever look like a sorcery that must have been working against you, the anointing is putting them to an end. Amen. Say amen like a believer. Amen. How do we assess this anointing? You cannot assess the anointing except you are born again. New birth gives us access. To the enabling power of the Holy Spirit. In fact, the moment you are born again, whatever is surrounding you that is behind your frustration, that is behind your setback, they are receiving a matching order to quit. And from today, they will begin to quit. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. The moment you are born again, scripture says, as many as believed him, to them gave he power to become. Power to become. Now hear me. Whatever God has ordained for you in life, you can never become without the Holy Spirit. To them gave he power. Knowing fully whether well the Holy Ghost is the one in charge and controlling power, you need him. You need him to become. As many as believed him, to them as he gave him, to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, power to become. You will become everything God ordained to you. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Everything God has appointed for you, you will become that thing. Make that amen louder.
So when the Holy Ghost shows up, you are on your way to greater glory. Though thy beginning be small, though thy beginning be small, thy latter end shall greatly increase. I want to tell you, you may not have started well in January, but between now and December, you will end well. I'm not, I'm not telling you to make you feel good. I am telling you the counsel of the Lord. You will end well. You will end super blessed. You will end up super favored. You will end up with amazing restoration. Whatever look like a setback now, I decree divine turn around for you. If you are saying amen, say a better amen. Today is your set time. Today is your set time. I say today is your set time. So no matter what is happening, no matter what is the reason why you are where you are now, today is your set time. When it is your set time, what happens? When it's your set time, what happens? I've discovered when it is someone's set time, the climate change, the environment change, laws change, protocol change. Why? It is the person's set time. I've also discovered your set time also is not your wish. It's God's arrangement. Because if it is your wish, you will have desired it longer than now. True of us? When it is your set time. When it was Joseph's set time, they sent for him. He was a prisoner, but they sent for him. When it is your set time, people that didn't want to see you before, they will be looking for you. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. By reason of today's service, your name will be ringing bell for remembrance. Believe the Lord thy God and thou shalt be established. Believe also his prophet, so shall thou prosper. Now I want to say to someone, today is your set day. Today mark the end of every delay in someone's life. If you are saying amen, say a better amen. They sent for him and lose it. It was a set time. It was a set time. Mordecai did something. He never expected that one day they will call him. But on the day of his set time, scripture said that the king could not sleep. What was done for the one that rescued the king when so and so person was to attack? They said, King, nothing has been done. Oh, no wonder. No wonder the spirit has been troubling me. Please send for Mordecai now. I want to tell you, the good you have been doing that has not been rewarded, today is your set time. Amen. If you are saying amen, say a better amen. amen. You will be remembered for a good reward. Amen. You will be remembered for favor. Nehemiah prayed, he said, remember me, oh my God, for the good deeds that I have done towards thy house and for the burnt offerings. Remember me for good. Remember me. I want to say to someone, before 1 p.m., not tomorrow, you will be remembered. Whoever is connected to your remembrance, they will not rest until you are settled with that blessing. If you are saying amen, say a better amen. Whoever is connected to your breakthrough, I command their loins to be loose for your remembrance. Whoever is connected to your laughter, I decree let your name ring bell in their heart today. I pray 
pray for someone here. By the authority of Jesus, the backer of this commission, what no man can give to you, I decree by the anointing, be settled for remembrance. The anointing that will settle you will rest upon you today. I like you, everyone, rise up to your feet. Pray from the depths of your heart. Lord, by this anointing today, say to me, in this covenant day of remembrance, say to me, lift up your voice and talk to God right now. Naronde Shekuteria, Lekobrekle Kikatalia, in this covenant day of remembrance, say to me, cause my name to ring bell for remembrance for good. Remember my good deeds. Remember me for favor. Remember me for open door. Lift up your voice and pray from the depths of your heart. You must be remembered for good. You must be remembered for good. Lift up your voice. Jesus Akatania. Rendo Lobo Shakute. Zizo de Keleriata. Nelo Roshakatalia. Nike Brekatalia Roshata. Lift up your voice. Oh Lord, by the anointing, remember me for good. Remember me for favor. Remember me for laughter. Remember me for a change of story. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. You are here, you are not born again. The beginning of your remembrance starts with you accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. Wherever you are, inside and outside, you want to make it right with God right now, put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you pray that prayer with me, wherever you are, God bless you. Put your hands together for Jesus. Come quickly right now. I want to pray for you. Just come right now. I want to pray for you.